Okay, today I got a 2009 Mazda 5 and the heater motor doesn't work. Got a new one here to replace it somehow. I guess this is the part number for these if you have a uh, rear heat, which apparently this one does have. If you don't have rear heat, it's a different part number. I looked it up in the labor guide and it says 2.8 hours to replace this. But it also says to uh, take the brake and the gas pedal out. I didn't see anything mentioning the clutch. I don't know if they're on the same uh, the same bracket or not. But yeah, the heater motor is somewhere up there behind the radio, from what I can see in the diagrams. Uh, yeah, from what I've seen, you got to pull all this stuff out of here, pull the pedals out. And then go over to the other side on the passenger side pull a glove box out and in behind there i already pulled that one panel down to take a look just i was hoping everything i saw online was wrong but no but for some reason it says to pull a part of the heater box out on the passenger side and remove it part of the housing um i don't know why it looks like these uh well, if this heater motor is the right one, I believe they just, uh, they just unscrew. I don't see why you'd have to pull the other end of the housing out. But I've never done one, maybe you do. So I guess we'll have to get started here. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do, from what I understand, this has to come out. The book says to pull a console out too, but yeah, I don't want to if I don't have to, but I might have to depending on how this is all snapped together. It's just, yeah, could turn into one of those things. So I guess I'll get started. Oh yeah, the thing is has 200 and something. Where's the steering wheel? Yeah, 246,605 kilometers. Alright then. Okay, so it just has a couple of clips and then slides into a bracket over there. And my Chinese uh, Amazon special door panel clip tools. Seen better days. So far, things are uh, kind of a pain in the ass to get the hood release cable for the handle off. It kind of just slides in place. And where are we here? Yeah, so you got to pry up. I'm gonna stick something. Hold on here. All messed up. Yeah, when the cable's in, or when the handle's in place, you gotta slide something between the cable or the handle and dash like a flat screwdriver and you gotta try and push up on this little tab and I'm trying to do this while laying on my back here but yeah because this piece here look at it from the side with my fingers in the way anyways yeah that's how you release it this piece here locks in the place and it looks like there's a Phillips screw in here. I don't know if it feels like there's another one over here, but I can't. Uh, uh, okay, well, this isn't the right way to do it. It looks like the uh, console has to come out to get this, this piece of trim out because this sits on top of this piece. Uh, anyways, I'm going to see if I can get it out. I just. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. It, so hopefully I don't have to still pull the console out. I don't think I broke anything. Okay. Oh, yeah. Got to unplug this. Uh, somehow. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, they use. That's probably rock hard plastic that won't. Uh, that won't move it. So. Okay, well, not entirely sure why I had to take that off. Didn't really do much. Um, not sure. So I'll get the gas pedal off next, I guess, and then figure out how to get the brake pedal off. Can't really see in here because the steering column cover goes ridiculously far into the dash. For, well, it is telescopic, I guess, but still. Okay, just got the gas pedal out. It's three 10 mils, and where are we here? Yeah, that's what they used to get it out, quarter drive deep. Um, yeah, don't know what length that is. And one of these. Okay. Yeah, still can't see the, well, can't really see it very well. Heater motor is somewhere up. Uh, you can just see it. The little hose attached to it, but it's buried behind all the stuff. Okay, well, okay, I didn't show it, but I uh, oh, I already forgot how this goes. This goes in there somewhere like that, I'm pretty sure. Oh, let's try it like this, anyways. It hooks onto that pipe there. There's a clip there. It's one of those. Uh, that was one of these. Held it in place. And I guess I'll pull this plate off here. Just for sharts, I'll mark it which side is up. Just because, yeah. Okay, you got the brake, uh, brake switch unplugged. And in between those two pieces of tape there. Oh, you can barely see it. There's a connector there. Uh, not a connector, but the wiring harness is clipped to the to the bracket. Okay, so now I'll try and get that. Uh, where are we here? Oh, okay, there we go. I'll try and get that pin out of there. Pull that out. Push the pin that holds the pedal to the brake booster out, and then I'll get those four nuts there. Uh, Two on this side, two on the other side of the, the brake pedal. Got a decent picture, but it's a bunch of car in the way. Okay, so there's the pin out. Okay, got the four nuts off. Looks like you might have to pull that bolt out there. I think that bracket where the gas pedal attaches is part of the same plate. And I found another wire. Okay, well, this isn't working. But that piece of tape, that orange tape on the left side of the uh, brake light switch, there's another clip that's... The harness is clipped onto the bracket there, so that has to come off too. Okay, there's one more nut or bolt, I can't tell. Right at the very top of where the pedal pivots. It's kind of in the way, you can't really get a straight shot at it. Dash is kind of in the way. Not sure. How would it get in there quite yet, but... Uh, so we'll figure it out. That one might be an optional. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I had it. Hang on here. You can see way where the camera's not focusing. Way back in there. Just stuck a big screwdriver in and pried it on this, uh, this clip. I was able to pull the harness out of the way just enough that I think I can get a socket in there. Okay. Been fighting with this for a couple minutes. Trying to get the uh, brake pedal out. Uh, pulled the battery out, found out it's not the right battery. Whoever put it in there put a couple inches of uh, cardboard to build up the bottom so it would uh, bolt down. Anyways, I was hoping to take the battery, uh, battery box out. There's three bolts that hold it on the bottom. Surprisingly, they all came out and didn't break. But... Uh, wiring harness is clipped on here and here, not a big deal, but everything is just holy crap. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how the computer comes out. I don't even want to dink with it. There's a little bit of play in there enough to, that I can push on the booster, have it come this way and the studs will clear, but still can't get it out. 
Uh, and then discovered, not sure if I can get a good angle on this, but way up there is a little piece of silver right on the top. Uh, let me see if this will focus. It's like a little tang. It looks like it must be attached to the booster that's hooking on this metal bracket and stopping the bracket from pulling back. So we got to figure out how to, I uh, guess I'm going to have to try and bend that out of the way. Fun. Okay, yeah, that's all that was holding it. Just this big Jeeba's screwdriver to pry that little tab out of the way and hopefully I can get this out of here without breaking that brake switch off. Okay. Well, I'll put this down. Okay, so I had to run a bungee cord from the master cylinder to the, uh, well, towards the front of the car to kind of pull on it a little bit. To pull it out of the hole because it was hanging up on the, on the bracket here. And after fighting with it a couple more minutes, managed to, it came out uh, this way. Just turned it and would have liked to have pulled the brake switch out because I think it's going to need to be adjusted. Oh, or I might need a brake switch. I don't see that. Uh... Hmm. Oh, well, maybe not. Thought that little white piece would stick out, but maybe that's just the way it is. But anyways, yeah, I couldn't figure out how to get the brake switch out. Usually you just turn them and a lot of the cars, but I didn't want to force it. Probably a locking tab in there somewhere that would have broke off. But anyways, throw that in the pile. Stick this in there. Oh. Okay, there it is. That was easy. Uh, ow. Probably a locking tab I gotta push that's at the hardest spot to reach, I'm sure. So. Okay. Wow. So this ring goes around the heater motor. I can't remember exactly how it sits, but I can barely get your finger on on this tab there. You gotta kinda push down on that or squeeze it in and uh honestly I already forgot which way it has to go to get it out of there. I'm pretty sure it was lefty loosey. Uh, clockwise to, or counterclockwise to get that out. Now, where's the motor? Now there it is there. I don't know if there's anything else holding that on. Like when I looked in the manual to pull it off, how to get this out, it said to pull the glove box and pull a part of the heater motor or heater housing on the right hand side too. Um, I don't want to. Okay, so it looks like I'm taking the right side of the dash apart glove box heater box it feels like the motor has to come out the right hand side so and it looks like this might be a two-person job to try and get it in the place um yeah 2.8 hours i don't know about that maybe if you do them every day i guess but yeah not for me um so yeah yeah it feels like that that motor won't come out because the housing is smaller than the well, yeah, I guess that kind of shows what's going on here. Here's the new motor. This ring kind of sits on there. Yeah, so the hole in the heater box feels like it's only about this small. So the heater motor has to go out through the passenger side. Okay, got the club box out manage to uh yeah what a pain like lights like this usually you just twist and they unplug but this one uh, no it's yeah probably break it taken out yeah so you need to take uh, undo the glove box from the uh from this piece 
from the inner glove box, I guess you call it, and uh, yeah. That didn't want to come. Screw there, screw there, two on the top, and one more on the side. So you gotta take the kick panel off and the rocker, the sill plate off. And up inside the glove box, there's a screw. Through there, that silver one. Another one. There. There's, there's supposed to be another one back there somewhere. Which I can't see. So, cool. Now I think, I hope this is the right screw off. Oh, I can feel one. Uh, that's where we're at. Yeah, so just below that, uh, behind that actuator. Okay, so I got those three screws out. I had to pull this little clip out of there, or wherever that went, to hold the wiring harness in. Oh, it went back in here. Um, yeah, I'd like to get this unplugged, but I can't see how it works yet. Okay, well, if I ever buy one of these and it needs a heater motor, oh, what the hell is that? Uh, this is not gonna, that just kind of fell out of there, so that's cool. I believe it went in this way. So with any luck, the heater motor. Uh, might just pull out this way. I'll probably have to push it from the other side because that vent tube is probably hanging up, I'm sure. Yeah, anyways. Oh, wiggle. Okay, just thought the wiggle went a little bit. <coughs> and it pushed out. Wow. That does feel pretty stiff. That's the, probably the heater resistor there. With two uh, silver Phillips screws. Okay, well, <clears throat> looks like the right one. Of course, most of these aftermarket ones have a pigtail on them instead of plugging in directly. But, I'm gonna have to say, oh, the fan is a little different. This is tapered down at the bottom. And But as long as it's the same diameter. Mm. Well, hopefully that doesn't screw us up. So I'll make sure it fits in that uh, that round piece that fell out. So I did test the old one. It does work, but it's very noisy. So it probably worked until it burnt out the fuse, hopefully. There's a good chance when it plugs this one in, it's not going to work. It, part, it probably blew a fuse or, uh, or burnt out the heater resistor. Okay, so I think I got the motor in the position. It doesn't seem like it's, uh, where are we? I really don't know. I think that's about the same spot as it was, the old one was. The vent pipe, I believe, or the vent tube should face down. Uh, yeah, I think it's sitting flat down there. So now I need to get one of the kids in here to hold it <laughs> from the back side. Because, uh, yeah.
back other. Yeah, well, this will either work or it won't. Just stuff the towel in there, into the back side of the blower motor, and uh, stuck a big pry bar in here. And maybe I'll put something on this end and close the door. Maybe it'll give it, give it a little bit extra. Oh, there we go. Yeah, good enough. Okay, well, I'll see how this goes. Um, I can't remember where this tab locks in, so this will be, I think it was near the top. Yeah. Okay, well, that actually went surprisingly well. Put the ring on there, had to slide it around the wires, obviously, and I just kept tightening it, just spinning it counterclockwise. It would catch and back off. Just kept spinning it until it caught that, uh, to that locking tab, locked into place. And that was it, so. Uh, I guess next step I should put the battery back in. Actually, I don't know if I wanted to test it first, but I got the gas pedal unhooked, so I could probably throw, throw some lights that I don't have the scanner here to erase. So, um, yeah. Actually, yeah, I'd rather test it now than and have a check engine light that means nothing than find out this thing's noisy. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay, well, I guess I'll check the fuses first. Okay, under the hood fuse box. It looks like... Okay, well, these two here are for the front blower motor, they seem fine. They don't look broken. So I guess I'll pull the heater resistor out, take a look. Okay, getting this slowly put back together. Got that housing back in place. Even got all the screws in. Just the, the silver screws there. And yeah, the back one you can see right there. That one's actually not that bad to get to. I just use the shorter screwdriver. Where are we? There we go. Um, yeah, it's not the right size. It's a little bit smaller tip, but it worked. Managed to get it started. Just pushed into the hole with my fingers. The other two, I just got the screw on the end of the screwdriver and guided it in to place, and that worked out. Put the wire, um, the harness clip back into place. Um, yeah. Plug in that actuator first before you put the housing in. It was kind of a pain in the ass. I kind of had to get that air deflector piece in, lined up. There's a one odd notch that goes up into the top corner there. Oh, why is it zoomed in? Whoops. Uh, but yeah, that's all in there. Uh, customer. I jumped the uh, resistor quickly. I turned the heater on. It wasn't working. Unplugged the uh, resistor here. Oh, well, wherever it is. Here. And I jumped the two wires, the black and the blue. Heater motor worked, so I checked all the fuses underneath the hood. And these ones here, tested them all with a multimeter. They're all, all good. The only ones I didn't test were the two under the fuse box under the hood. They looked okay. So I'm assuming they are. So they didn't look broken. They're the ones with a little window that's, that look like uh, that pink one that... Uh, Oh, so yeah, now I'm putting everything back together. I'm hoping I can get all this stuff back together without having to pull the console out because it's a pain in the in the hoop. I don't really want to have to do that, but I guess I will. Um, yeah, customer is going to pick this up in a couple hours, so hopefully I get this all back together. They're bringing a resistor with them, so I can just slap that in. Last, I guess I should make sure that drain's unclogged, but... And now would be a good time to change your cabin filter because it's, it's actually, it looks like there's two of them in here. I pulled them back out. I'm not going to do it again because it was kind of a pain to get them back in place. But you pull this bottom one out and then that top one 
drops down and then pulls out. And they're two different shapes. They're not the same. The top and bottom are different filters. You gotta put them in a certain way and, but yeah, it's not what I'm doing today. I just wanted the motor changed and I told them you need a resistor too, so. And yeah, so running out of pieces on the passenger side. So. Got the trim piece left and this lower piece that goes up underneath the dash under the glove box here. And yeah, so and once you get a heater resistor, you can slot that back in. It's only well, I didn't have to pull that. Normally, you shouldn't have had to pull that housing, but the old one was kind of glued right in place. I don't know if it melted in place or what, but uh, I didn't want to break break this piece so I ended up taking it out and pushing it from the back side you can bolt that back in and then it's just two screws two plugs and uh, that's all we'll be back in place so now on to the driver's side try and get that pedal uh, wiggled up in there and so yeah again that's where we're at there really kind of wondering if you even have to pull the pedal out because I only pulled it out because I thought that's how the heater motor came out but well I guess you do need clearance to get your hand up in there it's pretty tight but wow all that work just to unplug the heater motor and well I guess you got to get that retaining ring out but yeah they made this way way stupider than it really needs to be but they're not the only ones that do that co-worker had a, a Kia Soul and apparently it's the same deal it's pretty similar you got to pull a brake pedal out I didn't do it myself but I heard it was that wasn't fun for the guy that did it with no heat in their garage or did it in the parking lot or something but yeah anyways I guess I will try to get this in there now yay Okay, I got the four nuts started for the hold the brake booster in place and the pedal. Uh, now to get the top bolt. There's that top bolt. This uh, screwdriver up, move the harness out of the way a bit, and you can get straight in there. Straight through the, uh, well, yeah. In there. Wherever it went. Yeah. There. Kind of a tight fit, but you can kind of get in there. Okay. Uh, got the brake pedal hooked back up there. Got the pin in and the other pin in. Now to tighten up the, uh, all the nuts. Tighten up the five nuts and then I'll get the throttle pedal back in place. Plug the brake switch in and then run the harness. Clip in those two clips that go onto the brackets. I'm gonna do that last because the wiring harness is kind of in the way to get to those nuts. So yeah, again, those are 12 mil to hold the boosters in, or to hold the booster. It's so one, two, three, four around the hole, and there's one you can get to through the side of the steering column. Yeah, here's the gas pedal. Made by Hella in Germany. And yeah, that's probably part of the reason why it's such a pain in the ass to work on right there. Okay, pedals in, three 10 mil nuts. Uh, where are they? One, two, three, and that bolt there. That's another 12 mil bolt that holds that bracket in. That one had to get tightened. Get everything buttoned up, all the wiring's in place. Uh, something I should mention, that uh, clip right there. Oh, that rod that goes to that uh, flapper valve there. That clip popped off. The rod was still hanging on there, but probably Second or third time that flopped around, it would have came off. So it must have bumped it when I was trying to reach in there at one point. Something to just keep in mind, I guess, if you're hanging around in there. But otherwise, just about done. I did take that cover off there. Got to put the brace across here still. Then, yeah, a couple more. Oh, and a duct and here. Almost done. Okay, well, look what I just found. Whoops. 
I guess I gotta put that back on. <laughs> back on the motor. Somewhere up in there. Uh, yeah. Fudge. Oh, well. Okay. Oh, I didn't bother filming that because you can't see in there anyways, but I got the paint in the hoop, but I ended up pulling the gas pedal out to get in there and it wasn't too, too, too bad. Put the part on the heater box on first and then came back and wailed the part on the heater motor. And that worked out. Okay, so everything's back in place. Um, yeah, kick panel. All that good stuff. Ducting, blah, blah, blah. Um, this slipped into place okay. So now to put the battery back in. There's a stack of cardboard that they had underneath it. I don't know who did it. It works. So I'll get that button back up, put all these covers back on. Yeah, when it comes down to it, there's lots of things that uh, can pop up on older cars. Shit. The uh, brake lights are stuck on, so I gotta, I must have bumped that switch, knock it out of adjustment, so, or broke it. So that's cool. Okay, well, there doesn't seem to be any adjustment on this uh, brake switch. I did get it out. Um, had to turn it, I believe it was clockwise, to get it out of there. It's kind of a pain in the... But yeah, there's these two uh, black pieces that are recessed in there. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on. It doesn't feel... Uh, feels a little off. But uh, yeah, I probably broke it because I, I would pull back on the pedal and I think I might have pushed up against it. Uh, I was trying to wiggle it out of there and probably buggered it up. Whoops. But yeah, so there's one in uh, in town there, so they're going to grab one of those when they pick up the heater resistor. <laughs> Must be a relatively common problem if they have one on the shelf for an 09 uh, Mazda. So yeah, so maybe keep one of these handy in case you're changing your blower motor because there's a good chance you might do what I just did. Or maybe you'll be more careful and not, but you can always take these back. So I didn't record putting the brake switch or the heater resistor back in. Uh, pretty straightforward, but yeah, hopefully this helps somebody out. Thanks for watching.